Saints. This is our second week. A few days ago, while I was preparing for some for this message, I was looking at some. I was googling it. I was googling something of signs gone wrong. In the Philippines, it happens. There are signs, and unfortunately, some signs are not clear. It mis- can be misunderstood, just like this one. We know what it means, but it's kind of wrong. Weight paint. <laughs> Warning, slow men at work. Okay, some of you didn't get it, so you can ask the person beside you. Tomorrow you'll get it. A church sign says to all our dear parishioners, please do not leave your personal belongings unattended. Somebody might think it is the answer to their prayers. I thank God it's not a sign in victory. Do you know what hell is? Come here, our preacher. <laughs> Honk if you love Jesus. Text while driving if you want to meet him. <laughs> Beyond the signs. What are signs? Uh, last week I said signs are there to point us to a certain direction or to a certain destination. If you notice in our building, there are a lot of signs. Not a lot. A handful of signs. If you notice in this door, there's a sign called exit. And we know what that means, right? If there's a fire while I'm preaching, I hope not, then we can go there. It's a sign. It directs us. Or in a bathroom outside. Or how to register for DC 2000. There's a sign. And signs are there to direct us and guide us to the, a certain direction. This series is all about the miracles of Jesus. That, that's why some Christians call the miracles of Jesus as what? Signs and wonders. Why? Because the miracles of Jesus, the purpose of that is not just for your needs to be met, but to direct you to Jesus and to know Him more. That's why we call it signs and wonders. I, many, many years ago, I... I had the privilege to go to the States and have a vacation with my family. And it was actually during December, so it was winter time. Unfortunately, we were in California, so it doesn't really snow. It's co- it gets colder, but it doesn't snow there. There are only two parts in California, if I'm not mistaken, uh, or three, that snows. So I went up there at the, a place called Big Bear. It snows there. It's a mountain. There's a resort. So during winter season, if you want to experience snow, you can go up and drive. So uh, I'm so excited. I don't get to see, we don't get to see snow here, right? We, we see sweat here, but we don't see snow. Two seasons lang naman sa Philippines, hot and hotter. So in the States, thank God we were going up. It's actually a zigzag. Parang bagyo. You go up, but it's bigger. I was already impatient. I wanted to see some snow, man. And I, I, unfortunately, while we were driving, I can't wait. So, but then it started to drizzle while we were going up gradually. It started to drizzle. Um, ambon. I'll rain a little bit. You know what? When we got nearer to the place, Big Bear Resort, it's amazing because it transitioned. The raindrops started to transition and become more of like a snowflake. When I saw some sna- signs that I'm kind of near to our destination, I, I'm, I've been seeing some snowflakes now. I have a choice. I could have settled there. I could have settled and say, oh, snow. And take some, uh, there was no still digital camera, uh, no smartphones yet at that time. So I can say, this is snow. And I could have stayed there, right? But I know it's just a sign that I'm near to my destination. So I'm not going to stay in that place where snowflakes are dropping. I would continue to push on and move forward until I get to that destination where the snow is actually thick already. And then I can really say it's winter time. And so I share that story to us because when we talk about the miracles of Jesus, I know all of us are believing for a miracle. Right? Right? To all the singles here, you're believing for a breakthrough. Woo! Come on now. Kaya pa yan. There's still hope. I remember one time I was conversing with someone. I wanted to get married when I was 27 years old. And I was a youth pastor back then. I was talking to a student. I don't know if he insulted me or he encouraged me. And so he asked me, a student. So the student asked me, Pastor, how old are you? I said, uh... 
I think I, that time I was 30, 30, 30, and I was still single. No, no girlfriend yet, pastor? No, no, I'm praying for it. I was talking to say, you know what the student said? He just yelled all of a sudden, there's still hope, pastor. <laughs> Tapat lang, no? May hope talaga to. <laughs> and so, anyway, some of us are believing for a business breakthrough. Some of us are believing for a financial breakthrough. Some of us are believing for healing. Some of us are believing for marriage restoration. Some of us are believing for relationship restoration. And so whatever things you're believing God for, there's nothing wrong with that. How many of you believe that He can fulfill that this year? How many of you are in faith? Nothing is impossible with Him. Amen? And if He fulfills that, just in case He does it today or He will do it tomorrow, my encouragement for us, it's just a sign. You don't stay there and go back to the world with once you receive that breakthrough. Once, when you receive that breakthrough, my encouragement for us, continue to know Him more. Don't settle there. Continue to know God more because He has so much more in store for us. And that's the goal of the miracles of Jesus. The problem with us is a majority of us, we settle with the miracle. You know, in Tagalog, we say, if God, pag ginawa na ni Lord, okay na ako. No, that's not the mindset. When God does it today or tomorrow, continue to walk with Him. Can continue to believe in Him as your Lord and your Savior. As continue to walk with Him and have a relationship with Him. So miracles, my point is, it's not the end. It's just a means to your destination. Westminster Catechism said, What's the chief end of man? The chief end of man is to glorify God and enjoy Him forever. And for some of us, miracles are a means so we can get to that destination, to glorify God and enjoy Him forever, having a relationship with Him. We'll, we'll study a person in John chapter 4, verse 46, of a person who did not settle with the miracle. He had a need. He was believing God for a provision, but as we look at this short passage, you'll see how his faith progressed. It started off with a need. But in the end, when we study his character, you'll see his faith progressing. Did not settle with the miracle. That was the initial step, believing for a miracle. But in the end, he recognized Jesus as so much more. And that's what we want to happen also in our lives. Where we just don't settle for a miracle. We just don't look at Jesus as a miracle worker. We just don't look at Jesus as a prophet or as a teacher. There's so much more that through the miracles that He will perform in your life, you'll have a greater revelation of who He is. In verse 46, this is the story. So He, Jesus, came again to Cana in Galilee where He had made the water wine. And we talked about that last week where in a wedding celebration, Jesus turned the water into wine. They were running out of wine and so to spared them from public humiliation and disgrace, the Lord made and did a breakthrough here. And at Capernaum, there was an official whose son was ill. Probably the story in Cana where Jesus turned the water into wine was actually a hit, a blockbuster hit where the story started to spread among the Jewish communities. So that's why this person who is an official from Capernaum, another district or another place, heard about that miracle. And maybe in this time that Jesus was already famous and popular for performing these wonderful signs and wonders. So he knew about it. A lot of people are aware of Jesus already. Verse 47, when this man heard that Jesus had come from Judea to Galilee, now that's far. If you look at the map, from Judea to Galilee, it takes you like probably one and a half days to get there to get and reach Jesus' place. He went to him and asked him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. So obviously, this official had a need. Hello. There would be no miracle if there's no need. If we all live perfect lives here, then we wouldn't need Jesus in the first place. But the reality is, all of us go through some needs. We all have needs. And that's why turns and there's a reality where we needed to rely on Jesus. And this is what happened to this man. Verse 48, so Jesus said to him, he got to the place and saw Jesus. Now take note. Take note of the first statement that Jesus utters when he sees this man. 
unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. You know, if you're the official, you're hurting. It's hard to have a son that's sick. If you have a child, you're a parent, it's hard seeing your child sick and even at the point of death. So you're in a desperate situation, obviously. And so, diba, when you go to a healer, or you know this carpenter named Jesus can help you, and this is a kind man, you'd be shocked at the first statement that Jesus utters. There was no even hi. You ever met someone like that? Doesn't say hi to you, but starts off with a sermon? Maybe your wife or your mommy. It's a mild rebuke. The welcome statement of Jesus was a mild rebuke to, to the official. Think about that. I thought this is Jesus, the good shepherd or the kind man, the compassionate person. There was no even hi or smile and a hug. Come here, baby. Come here. There was no comfort like that. It's a mild, I don't know if there's such a thing as a mild rebuke. All rebukes are harsh. Think about that. But the official was actually in need and it did not stop him from being offended or did not stop him from just asking Jesus from what he wanted. He still continued to pursue and persist. Lord, I, Jesus, I need your help. That's why in verse 49, Sir, come down. Uh, the place where Jesus was is a mountain, so it's high. Literally, you have to come down with him. And so, Sir, come down before my child Dies. Think about this. If you're the official, you have servants. You actually have messengers in your sta- as your staff. So, if you're an official, and if you're in, there, in his place, well, you know what you do? And knowing that the place of Jesus is far, what would you do? What's the most logical thing? What's the convenient thing to do? You'll ask your staff, your secretary, your runner, your messengers to, to go and approach Jesus and tell Jesus, I need you, come here. If there's a cell phone, you will just text, and, but there's no cell phone back then. It's more convenient. But it's interesting that the official who is high-ranking will go, and I'm not belittling an occupation here, will go to a certain carpenter from Nazareth. Take note. An official willing to inconvenience himself. Walk, travel far, and not even ask his servants and his staff to do it for him. But he'll go personally in a faraway place to Jesus asking help. There's something interesting about the situation. What would cause the official to go personally and talk to this carpenter from Nazareth whom he heard that does wonderful things. You know what would cause him and all of us to go and inconvenience ourselves, go very far and whatever it takes, I will, be, I will be asking for a breakthrough from this man. One word. It's actually desperation. Obviously, this man is desperate. The father desperately needed help. His son is dying. It's interesting that when you're in a desperate situation, it will actually cause you to be open to God and run to Him. If there's a beauty that we will see in the problems that we're going through, if there's any redeeming factor when it comes to your problems, I don't like, how many of you here you love problems? You don't invite someone to Starbucks or to a coffee shop and say, Georgie, come on, let's talk about our problems. No, it's, we don't like going through some tough situations and trials and storms. We don't like that. But if there's any beauty or redeeming factor to it, it's actually God uses those situations in our lives so that we can t- turn to Him. I know some of you here personally, and but I... For the sake of time, I can't ask each one of us, but majority of us, that the reason why we're serving God is because we faced a problem. We were all desperate, and that's why we turned to Him. One of our leaders, I'm not going to say who, I asked him one time, I think two years ago, I said, how did you get to know Jesus? Well, pastor, when I broke up with my girlfriend, it hurt me. 
I was lonely. And that was a turning point. I remember a businessman who has a family. Yeah, he attends church. It's already okay with him. Attends church from time to time. At least I checked religious ritual in a week. I checked it. That's it. That's it for him. But never took God seriously. He has a prosperous business, successful business. And that's why he never really saw the need of running and depending on God. And he was telling me the story, not until, not until there was a situation that took place, maybe because it all piled up, his anxiety, stress, and worry. How ironic. You have a prosperous business, but there's still anxiety and worry. And it all piled up, stress, exhaustion, and everything. One day, his heart palpitated. Now, it's a different kind of palpitation when you drink 10 times of 10 cups of coffee. This was a different palpitation. Actually, he got scared. He thought when his heart beat faster, he thought he was actually going to die. That's what he was telling me. And he thought he had a problem already in his heart, heart disease or cardiac arrest, and he'll die anytime soon. He got scared. Health crisis. That was a desperate situation for him. Lo and behold, when that desperate, desperate situation, when he went through that scary situation, the next day he starts contacting some of the small group leaders in church. And this is what he said, I want to take God seriously. In fact, the week after, I talked to him. Now, pastor, I want to join a small group. Okay, so if you don't want to join a small group, you don't have, no, I'm not scaring you. That, but that was the turning point for him. When he, got, when he went through that scary and desperate situation, he actually started running to God. And so if there's any beauty in... You ever ask God why whenever you have problems? How many of you, you did that? You ask God why. Why me? It could have been the person beside me. <laughs> right? Why me? Why is this happening to me? Why the marriage is failing? My marriage is failing. My business is failing and all these things. Why me? You know, if there's, I know there, God has a lot of answers to that why, but here's what I'm, what I'm certain of. One answer I can share. He uses that. Those things in your life, the problems, He uses that so that you will run to Him. That's what the official experience he was desperate. I'm sure he tried other faith healers, probably. Probably, he was open to that. As, basta gumaling yung anak ko. As long as my child gets healed, that's fine. But that was the starting point. We can also say he had a little faith already. But we'll see the next coming verses of how his faith progressed in believing God. God uses our desperate moments so that we can turn to him. Let's continue on in verse 15. Jesus said to him, they had a very short conversation, a long travel, but when the man saw Jesus, very short conversation. The first one was a mild rebuke, not even welcome. Hi, good morning, good evening, how are you? There was no even script like that. When you look at the passage, probably they talked more, but when you look at the passage, first was a mild rebuke. That was the welcoming remark. But the second one is, I don't know if Jesus was sympathetic or was showing compassion to this man. You know what Jesus said? Go. Go. I don't, want, I don't like you in my sight. Jesus. Oh, Lord. Wow, I thought you're kind. Go. Your son will live. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and went on his way. Now, so this is here something that's, that will... It's kind of mind-boggling. Number one is this. I, I face Jesus and I hear a mild rebuke. Probably it wasn't just a rebuke to him, against him, or maybe the people around him because the people back then just wanted miracles. They didn't want to believe in Jesus as God. They were just attracted to all the miracles. So maybe the Lord was rebuking not just him, but the crowd. But the second one is this. Go. How do you translate go in Tagalog? You ever did that? Not here. Outside? Wow, Lord, I traveled one and a half days only to hear from you. You didn't even hug me. You didn't even smile at me. The first one was mild rebuke. The second one is go. 
your son will live. That's interesting. What did, what was one thing that the man was asking aside from healing? The official. What did the official actually want from Jesus aside from healing? Come with me. Right? That's what he was asking Jesus. Lord, my son is dying. I'm in desperate situation. I want you to come with me. Let's walk together. La 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 land. And then when you get to the house, when you see my son, Lord, I want you to lay your hands on him and just say whatever, yabadabadu or whatever. In Jesus' name, not in Jesus' name, that is Jesus already. Be healed, whatever. That's what I want. I have an expectation already. This is the method or how you will answer my prayers. But then you'll be shocked. In short, Jesus will say, I'm not going to go with you. In the first place, it's far. (laughs) So I'm God. I'm God anyway. I just say the word and everything will fall into place, right? So that's what actually Jesus was saying. Okay, so go. I'm taking care of it. But the good thing about this man is, again, his faith progressed. Started from desperation. But then he, what did it say here? He believed God's word. He believed God's word. Even though it was different from his expectations. And I want us to be reminded today, church, God answers our prayers and it might be different from our expectations. If you're the official, you would appreciate more if God, well, you know, this is a, a, a man who works wonders. Not yet, he wasn't having a revelation of God yet, but he was, still, he was believing that Jesus can perform miracles. So I would appreciate more if we walk together, let's go home. This is my expectation. This is my mindset. We go home. You see my son. Just in case my son flatlines, you're there. Sigurista. But we all want that physical support, moral support. I remember one time when, uh, when, when I was about to lay down my intentions to Carla, my wife. So I, I was so nervous. It was our first date, and uh, so we had dinner. But I was actually planning. We've, we've already known each other for months. So it was, it was our first date. Uh, thank God she agreed. And so we were having dinner, and then on the way home, before I dropped her off in the house, at her gate, uh, the gate of her house, I said, I need to tell you something. I was so nervous. I I was going to tell my feelings to her. And so I said, uh, I said, I know you like me. Don't deny it. No, of course, I didn't say that. I just said, I said, I like you. I like you. And the reason why I wanted to go out with you and have a date with you is because I'm attracted to you. And, you know, I want to get to know you more. And wag na natin patagalin to. Ocho diretso na tayo. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry. Uh, I said that. I mean, I, I like you and I hope you like me too. <laughs> and so I asked her, is it okay if I court you? So at least I want to be clear with my intentions. You know, I was expecting a magnificent yes, and she jumps, and then she says, yes, yes, a thousand times. No, it didn't. she didn't do that. You know what she did? She actually, anyway, she said, she said, give me two weeks. Wow. No answer, two weeks? Hmm? Two weeks? <laughs> two weeks, man. It's a suspense. I actually felt like I was dumped already. I actually felt that she refused two weeks. In my mind, you know what? If you're just going to say no, just say it now. Just, just plunge the dagger. Just pierce me. At least I can move on. That's what, in my mind, I didn't say that, right? <laughs> because I was still in faith. Remember, you can turn to God in desperate times, right? That's my first point. So, Two weeks, I was hurting already. But the, men, you know what I'm talking about, right? If there's no clear answer and the girl of your dreams tells you two weeks, it's a suspense, you're hanging. I can't sleep. Thank God I have friends, male friends, who will comfort me and who can relate to my situation. 
who got dumped before also. <laughs> so I called them up and I said, in Tagalog, I called them Lamay boys. <laughs> the crying boys. So I asked them, bro. And I shared the story. And of course, they were supporting. What? She did that? Yeah, man, two weeks. Come here, go to my condo. I said, come here, go to my condo. Let's play PlayStation. We will not sleep. I can't sleep anyway, so don't sleep too. I said, we will not sleep for two weeks. We'll pray and fast. If I need what I... Okay. So I can't sleep. Some of you felt that already, man. Don't raise your hands. You, 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 some of you, you were dumped by a girl already. It hurts. It hurts, man. It hurts. Anyway, I'm done with my preaching. I'm just joking. <laughs> so I was asking for support. Why? I share that story because all of us, when we go through those moments, whether you lose a loved one, you're hurting, you're frustrated, you're stressed, you need someone by your side physically to assure you everything will be okay, right? Especially for women. How many of you are women? You know what I'm talking about? Girl, stay here, girl. <laughs> Besh, I need you now, Besh. You mean? Just cry with me, Besh. You know what I'm talking about. You know, you want a companion to reassure you. The physical, my point is, the physical presence matters a lot. So the fact that if the official who was needing a miracle and a comfort from Jesus, and Jesus did not even go with him, if you're a skeptic person, you would have doubted Jesus already. But you know, one thing we can learn from this person is this. Even though physically Jesus was not with him while he was on the way home, the good thing about this person was God's word was more than enough. Sometimes when we go through some wilderness, in a wilderness, or when we go through some tough times where we don't sense the presence of God because the problems that we're facing is very, are very overwhelming, I want us to understand today that you may not feel the presence of God, but you look to His Word, and His Word assures, you, assures us that everything is under control. How many of you believe that His promises are yes and amen? We can trust His Word, even though there are times when I don't feel the presence of God. Remember some of us who have been a Christian for a long time, when we worshiped God before, there were goosebumps, man. All the hair will stand up, even the hair in your armpit stand up. Ooh, electric! Yeah! The first song in the church, sung in the church, right? What was the first song a while ago? Uh, author up my... The first... Oh, oh, bah, bah, praise the Lord! I mean, you know what I'm talking about? There was a season in your life where you sense the presence of God. The moment you see the smile of the author, wow, an angel, an angel, right? But there were times also when God leads you to a wilderness where, Lord, are you here? Before I sense your presence, I know you're there. But because of the wilderness I'm in, I walk through the valley of the shadow of that. I sense like you're not there with me. I'm sure some of you felt that. And the good thing about the official, what we can learn, even though I don't feel your presence, I trust your word. Because your word assures me, your word is more than enough to assure me that you are with me. You will never leave me nor forsake me. That's why we walk by faith, not by sight. And he will always be there for us. He trusts God, even if it's different from our expectations. Sometimes the problem is we're more all-knowing than God. Lord, this is what I want, okay? When you, when you answer my prayer, I want this client. I want this boss. I want this house. But listen, Ikaw na Diyos. Let God be God. He, how many of you believe God knows better? He knows better. And that's what the official, maybe he's desperate, the official. Okay, Lord, I trust you. You won't go with me? Sure. Sure. I'll buy you Starbucks. Go, go. But then he walked and believed God. What happened? Of course, as he was going down on the way, when he was in the house, his servants met him. Oh, not in the house. Uh, traveling. His servants met him and told him that his son was recovering. Just like what Jesus said. 
So he asked them the hour when he began to get better, and they said to him, yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. Remember, it's almost a, day tra- a day's travel. Seventh hour means, uh, when you say the first hour, it's actually the first hour of sunrise in Israel. So usually it's six o'clock. So count, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve o'clock lunchtime. When they were having a conversation, when Jesus said, go, your son will live. Exactly at twelve, the son got better. So God's word is credible. In verse 53, the father knew that was the hour when Jesus said to him, your son will live. But this is the result. And he himself believed. And all his family believed as well. Now this is a kind of be- different kind of believing already. The second one was actually just believing God's word. Okay, you said. But it even progressed. It resulted to he believed and the whole family started believing that God, that Jesus is actually God. No longer a carpenter who can perform miracles, but progressed. And the whole house would believe that carpenter is not just a regular carpenter. That Jesus is the Son of God, the Messiah. That was prophesied many, many. So they believed that. And this was the second sign that Jesus did when he had come from Judea to Galilee. It resulted there. They went beyond the sign. And so the third one that we can learn from this official is actually he believed God for his salvation. No longer for a miracle. Believe God that ultimately that Jesus was the Messiah. Just like the Apostle Paul elaborates it in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. It led to that point, but the, mir- the starting point was a desperate need and the means to it was the miracle and then it resulted to, wow, now I surrender my life to you. So after all the many things I said, here's the one big idea I want us to get and be reminded of. When God performs a miracle in your life, which He will do for sure, continue to walk with Him. Don't settle there. Continue, move forward, continue to know this God. Let me say that again. When God performs a breakthrough and a miracle in your life, do not stay there, but continue to walk and know Him more because that should be the ideal scenario just like from this official's life and testimony. The whole house will believe. You know, as I end, it's just interesting. The first miracle of Jesus last, we talked about that last week, was actually, wasn't done in a public square or in a marketplace or in a temple. The first miracle of Jesus was actually done in a very private setting, more private, in a wedding celebration which only implies that God performed His first miracle in a marriage. That's why I encourage all the married couples last week, God can continuously perform miracles for you. But the second recorded miracle that you see here is no longer in a marriage. The miracle took place in a family. Because of the healing of the son, all the household, the parents, the servants, the children, and all the people in the house believe in Jesus as their God. And so I want us to be reminded of that. Every family that's represented here, whatever you're believing God for, listen, nothing is impossible with God. He will perform miracles on your behalf. Whatever those things are, provision, restoration, breakthroughs for your children, breakthroughs in your family, in your marriage, can perform that. Nothing is impossible with him. Amen. How many of you believe that? So let's all stand. Let's just pray. Lord, give us the faith to believe. Sometimes when we go through some problems, desperate situation. Sometimes it's overwhelming, Lord. Um, it's really hard to sense if you're with us or you're for us. 
But Lord, your word is more than enough. We can trust your word. Even though sometimes our emotions are failing us, we can trust your word. Just like that official, Lord, who believed you, even though you didn't go with him physically, but the official had the faith to believe your word is more than enough. I can trust that. And true enough, Lord, the breakthrough took place. The miracle took place. So I just pray for all of us here today. You would strengthen our faith. Not just for a miracle to take place, but for us to see you as God, as our Lord, and as our Savior who would lead our lives. And that's our prayer today, Lord God. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be safe. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will never be put to shame. Some may trust in chariots, some may trust in horses, but we will put our trust in the name of our God, the name Jesus. That is the name that is above every name, that is the name that is exalted. Can we just all lift our hands to God as a gesture of surrender? We're surrendering our lives to you. Give us that kind of faith. And the official had, you will impart that faith to us so that we will go beyond the signs. We will not settle with the miracle, but we will continue to know you more as our God, as our Lord, and as our Savior. Just pray, Lord, this coming week, I pray that you will give us the grace to trust your word. Lord, let your word dictate our lives. Let your word break our mindsets, wrong mindsets. Let your word continue to bring encouragement. As we face this world this coming week, I pray that you will strengthen your people. Surround us with your presence and your favor and your righteousness, Lord. Thank you for always being there for us, with us, and you're not against us. We glorify you today. We thank you for your goodness and your love. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you.